Hi, my name is Kenneth Lee. I'm a musculoskeletal radiologist at the University of Wisconsin. I'm going to talk to you about musculoskeletal ultrasound of the ankle. The ankle is a really nice joint for ultrasound application. The title of my talk is If You Do the Twist, Musculoskeletal Ultrasound of the Ankle. My name is Kenneth Lee. I'm at the University of Wisconsin. I have no financial or commercial relationships to disclose. The objectives of this talk is to briefly discuss the ultrasound versus MR evaluation of the ankle, review the normal anatomy of the ankle to help set the stage, and to show that ultrasound is well suited to evaluate tendon and ligament injuries of the ankle. Lastly, I will introduce ultrasound guided interventions involving the ankle. Just as a brief outline for our talk, we'll talk about ultrasound versus MR evaluation as an evidence-based approach. Uh, we'll touch on the normal anatomy and some common pathology, starting with the Achilles tendon, going to the medial and lateral ankle tendons and ligaments, and then finishing off with the plantar fascia and the tarsal tunnel. So first, ultrasound evaluation. Uh, we like to think of it as an, it answers a specific question. So if you have a tendon tear, uh, like to rule that out with ultrasound. It's really good for superficial structures such as Achilles tendon, ligaments, plantar fascia, and also some soft tissue lumps and bumps. MR evaluation is different. It's more of a generalized approach uh, for ankle pain, um, especially for fractures because of its high soft tissue contrast. Uh, is also very good for looking at tendon and ligament injuries. But you could also look for bone marrow evaluation, the Taylor dome, any cartilage defects and loose bodies within the joint space, things that ultrasound um, cannot evaluate. And then also for mass and tumor workup as rheumatologic diseases as well that affect um, the joint. So let's talk about the accuracy of ultrasound versus MR. For ankle tendon tears, uh, the Achilles tendon under ultrasound is highly accurate peroneal tendons, as well as the PTT, which is a posterior tibial tendon, and the ATFL, which is the anterior tibial talofibular ligament, is very good under ultrasound evaluation with a high accuracy, well above 90%. So let's talk about the normal anatomy of the ankle. This helps set the stage uh, of ultrasound evaluation and how to diagnose tendon injuries. So first part is the medial side, where you get the posterior tibial tendon, that inserts on the navicular bone, and then the flexor digitorum longus tendon, and then lastly, the flexor hallucis longus tendon that courses underneath the ST, which is the sustentaculum tali. We teach our residents a mnemonic, Tom, Dick, and Harry, to remember the order of the medial ankle tendons. So as I go around the ankle joint to the posterior aspect, you can appreciate the normal anatomy and the relative relationship of the tendon to each other and to the bone which will become important when we look at the normal anatomy under ultrasound. And the posterior part is the Achilles tendon, which is the largest tendon in our body and the most commonly injured. And then a small plantaris tendon, which is a vestigial tendon that inserts on the medial side of the Achilles. Let's go to the lateral side, which is the, made up of the peroneal tendons. You have your peroneal brevis and your peroneal longus tendon that courses underneath the cuboid. We'll see that uh, under ultrasound as well nicely. And then finally, the extensor compartment, which is made up of the anterior tibial tendon, the extensor hallucis longus tendon, and then the extensor digitorum longus. A nice mnemonic here, instead of Tom, Dick, and Harry, is Tom hates Dick. So this is the basic anatomy of what we see. So let's start with the Achilles tendon. We usually lay these patients prone with their ankle dangling over the bed, and you can see on this corresponding MR our Achilles tendon, this normal, nice black structure. So if we correspond that with ultrasound, you can see the uniform thickness and echo texture and size of the Achilles tendon. We like to give our clinicians an extended field of view here where we can give um, a larger picture of the relative relationship of the ana anatomy to each other. You can see the nice Achilles tendon extending to the musculotendinous junction the calcaneus of the bony acoustic landmark, and then finally the posterior malleolus. So the Achilles tendon, this is an axial image, MR. If I flip this 180 degrees to correspond to the prone position of the foot on the patient's bed, this is what the Achilles looks like. Nice oval structure is not rounded, uniform and echo texture and size. This is a good look of what the normal Achilles tendon looks like. 
we like to assess uh, the Achilles tendon using dynamic um, measures of dorsiflexion of the ankle joint, you can look for tendon tears of the Achilles that becomes more conspicuous. This is just an example of the normal excursion of an intact Achilles tendon. Here's a look of an uh, abnormal Achilles tendon, what we call Achilles tendinopathy. You can see here we lose the normal uniform echo texture and size of the, of the Achilles tendon. It becomes thickened and heterogeneous and hypoechoic. If you put power Doppler on, you can see increased flow of hyperemia that's suggestive of Achilles tendinopathy. Here's an example of Achilles tendon tear. You can see on this lateral projection x-ray a soft tissue lump in the posterior aspect of the ankle. This person got an MR. You can see on the sagittal T1 weighted image a full thickness tear, a complete tear of the mid-substance of the Achilles tendon. This is a corresponding ultrasound image. Here in the long axis you can see the torn tendon ends and debris and hemorrhage within the, the full thickness defect. You can also appreciate Kager's fat pad herniating into this complete tear. On the short axis, on one of the torn ends, you can see how you lose that normal oval appearance. It becomes heterogeneously hypoechoic uh, and thickened. Here's an example of retrocalcaneal bursitis, um, a, a cause of painful um, posterior heel pain in patients. You can see the fluid collection behind the calcaneus and in front of the Achilles. In the corresponding image where you lay the patient prone, you can see this thickening of the bursa as well as fluid distending the retrocalcaneal bursa. And on color flow, you can see hyperemia. Here's an example of retro Achilles bursitis. So if we go a little bit more posterior, you can see fluid behind the Achilles tendon. On MR, it was equivocal whether this be a fluid collection or a mass. Nice thing about ultrasound is it can really differentiate well between a cystic structure versus a solid structure. This is what it looked like on the axial fat sat image. Here's the ultrasound of that same patient. When we're laying them prone, you can see the lump corresponding to the area. In this case, this patient was an athlete who was wearing high-heeled shoes or high-heeled sneakers while training and had this rubbing up against the posterior heel causing this adventitial bursa, which is a benign entity that we call retro Achilles bursitis. All right, let's move on from the Achilles to the medial side of the ankle. Remember, the, the posterior tibial tendon is the largest and the most medial tendon. It inserts on the navicular bone. Here you can see the nice normal structure under ultrasound. Uniform and echo texture in size and thickness as it courses behind the medial malleolus and then goes to insert on the navicular bone. This is a normal look of the posterior tibial tendon. Next is the flexor digitorum longus tendon, which courses right behind the posterior tibial tendon. It's a smaller structure, but nicely depicted under ultrasound. You can see here as it courses by the talus. This is a cine sweep of the relative relationship of the flexor digitorum longus to the calcaneus. Here's a bony acoustic landmark here, what I like you, or the talus, what I'd like you to appreciate as we, as we scan a little bit more plantar, you'll see the bony acoustic landmark of the calcaneus come into view, and then you can find the flexor hollicis longus. So there you go, flexor hollicis longus tendon right there. All right, so here's an example of abnormalities that we see along the medial ankle tendons. First is posterior tibial tenosynovitis, where you can see abnormal synovial hypertrophy around the normal Achilles or normal posterior tibial tendon. You can see here uh, color flow surrounding the posterior tibial tendon, suggestive of hyperemia. Uh, this person with tenosynovitis. Here's an example of a longitudinal split tear of the posterior tibial tendon. You can see the arrow marker points to the abnormal posterior tibial tendon with this hypochoic cleft that's suggestive of a yin-yang sign. Difficult to see on the long axis view, um, but this is what a longitudinal split tear looks like. And here's our surgical correlation for that. All right, so the medial ankle ligament that um, can be seen is a deltoid ligament. It's a complex of these four ligamentous structures that we often separate into superficial and deep. 
Uh, we can see this under ultrasound, however, we're not often asked to evaluate this, but I wanted to illustrate that you can see this. You can see on the ultrasound images to the left and the MR images to the right, the normal structure of the deltoid ligament. If you evert the ankle, you can even bring out the deltoid ligament and see that in, in a more conspicuous nature. All right, let's move on to the lateral ankle. Here, the two tendons that are of interest are the pronius longus and the pronius brevis tendons. They lie right adjacent to each other. You can see here on the Im ultrasound image to the right, the pronius longus tendon as it courses underneath the cuboid. The pronius brevis goes on to insert on the base of the fifth metatarsal bone. It's the smaller of the two and can be seen nicely, very superficial. So here's an axial MR image showing the, posterior, the peroneus brevis and longus tendon. If I rotate this image 90 degrees, uh, this, is, this red box shows you the ultrasound, corresponding ultrasound image. Here is the bony acoustic landmark of the most lateral aspect of the lateral malleolus, and you can see the peroneus longus and brevis as it courses behind it. The peroneus brevis tendon is the one that's closest to bone. So brevis for bone lies closest to the posterior aspect of the lateral malleolus. So here's an example of an axial uh, T1 and T2 image of the ankle. And you can see here under ultrasound, marked hyperemia, some synovial thickening, and the herniation of that peroneus longus into this split tear, the peroneus brevis tendon. So this is an example of a peroneus brevis longitudinal split tear. Ultrasound is also good for evaluating um, tendon subluxation um, or tear associated with metal. It's not hindered by uh, metal hardware within the joint. Here's an example of a person that had uh, catching along this fibular plate, and we were asked to evaluate the tendon. You can see here the heads of the screws corresponding to the fibular plate. You can see the nice tendon uh, that's intact and um, with dynamic imaging moves nicely along without any catching or tendon tear. All right, the lateral ligaments of the ankle can be nicely seen under ultrasound. Here is the anterior tibiofibular ligament. You can see here is nicely seen under ultrasound. It's smaller in echo texture and size than the normal tendon structure. Here's a corresponding MR image here. What's also nice is that with dynamic assessment with dorsiflexion, you can stretch the ligament to make sure it's intact. This is an example of a normal tibiofibular ligament that's intact. F corresponds to the fibula or the lateral malleolus, the tibia. And then if you stretch, if you dorsiflex, you can stretch the, ten, the ligament out to ensure that it's intact. In a tear, it would gap wide open. Here's an example of a high ankle sprain of that ligament. You can see here this ankle mortis view of the ankle widening of the medial clear space. You can see here on this corresponding axial T2 facet image, disruption of the anterior tib fib ligament. And then here this hypochoic defect corresponding to a tear within that ligament, suggestive of a high ankle sprain. Here's another ligament that we like to evaluate under ultrasound a little bit more distally. It's called the anterior talofibular ligament, or the ATFL. This is also nicely seen, similar echo texture and size to the anterior tib fib ligament. Here's an example of a lateral ankle sprain of the ATFL. You can see on this Netter diagram an, an inversion injury of the ankle joint. You can see the normal echo texture and size of the ATFL. And this is the corresponding torn, where you lose that echo texture pattern. You see this large hypochoic defect and disruption of the ATFL in this person with the lateral ankle sprain. Here's an example of an old ATFL tear, where you get marked thickening and heterogeneity of the ATFL. In the long axis, you can see that very well, as well as uh, the bowing and convex outward appearance of the ligament. You can see here on Doppler flow, increased hyperemia in this area of patient's pain, of a chronic ankle sprain. Here's a calcaneal fibular ligament. This is a nice ligament, three times stronger than the ATFL. Here's an MR image, coronal T1 image that I rotated 
uh, 90 degrees, uh, so it corresponds to the patient's positioning on the table with ultrasound imaging. You can see here nicely the calcaneus, uh, as well as the calcaneofibular ligament, and then the peroneus tendons that are nicely hammocked within this, calca this calcaneofibular ligament. So with plantar flexion, you can stress this ligament to make sure that it's intact. As you can see here, nice, normal, intact ligament, the peroneus tendon lifts up as you're stressing the, the intact calcaneofibular ligament in this case. Soft tissue lumps and bumps are nicely seen with uh, and, and evaluated with ultrasound. This is a patient that had an anterior lump um, right in front of their ankle. Here's a sagittal T1 image with a marker at its site that you can see marked thickening um, of this fusiform structure. On the axial PD image, you can see thickening uh, of this area under ultrasound we saw an abnormality of the anterior tibialis tendon, mark, markedly thickened, and then a meniscus at the level of the ankle joint here, suggestive of a complete tear. We like to give extended field of views uh, for um, a better relationship to the tear to the ankle joint so that our clinical providers can see this well. You can see our tibia, the talus that demarcates the ankle joint, and the tear, which is at the level of the ankle joint. Here's another example of a common soft tissue lump we're asked to evaluate called a dorsal ganglion cyst with a benign uh, degenerative cyst. An x-ray shows um, degenerative change at the navicular cuneiform joint. Corresponding ultrasound image shows this fluid-filled loculated structure projecting from the navicular cuneiform joint suggestive of a ganglion cyst, which is a benign lesion. All right, plantar fascia, um, another common indication uh, for ultrasound that we're asked to evaluate in our clinic. You can see the plantar fascia nicely in both the long axis and the short axis. Uh, even though we call it the fascia, it is likely a tendinous aponeurosis uh, that we can see nicely it causes the most common cause for inferior heel pain. You can see here a thickening of the plantar fascia on this extended field of view as it normalizes to the normal thickness. Um, an abnormal thickened plantar fascia is five millimeters in thickness or greater and that's measured from this yellow arrow, arrow down to the um, bony acoustic landmark of the calcaneus. Here's an example of PRP for the plantar fascia. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. Here uh, we are asked to um, inject a concentrated um, platelets for uh, filled with growth factors to help with the healing process. Uh, in patients with tendinopathy. You can see here from the left to right plantar fascia, uh, abnormal thickening on the left side to about 6.4 millimeters compared to the 4.3 millimeters on the normal asymptomatic right. Our needle approach is usually long axis from the heel pad into the plantar fascia. As we're needling the plantar fascia, we're depositing um, uh, platelet-rich plasma within this plantar fascia to promote healing. Our protocol is sterile preparation. We do a tibial nerve block to help with the pain. You can see here the tibial nerve that courses with the neurovascular bundle. We do skin numbing at the heel pad. We'll do dry needling in three locations and we inject three millimeters of PRP. The preparation here I show you a centrifuge uh, where we use a patient's own blood, approximately 30 cc's, and it gets spun down this closed system to about three milliliters. And it's the three milliliter of platelet-rich plasma that is used to inject into this abnormally thickened plantar fascia. Here's an example of MRI evidence of healing. You can see here on the sagittal T2 weighted fat set image, abnormally thickened plantar fascia, there's quite a bit of perifascial edema and bone marrow edema at the calcaneus. Approximately three months later, a follow-up MR shows resolution of that perifascial edema. The thickening remains but may be less apparent and there's still edema within the calcaneus. And this person that had plantar fasciopathy but now with pain relief three months post PRP injection. 
All right, lastly, the tarsal tunnel anatomy. It's a fibrosis canal that we're asked to evaluate on the medial side of the ankle. The roof is made up of the flexor retinaculum, which is this thin fascial layer that you can see on this netter diagram on the right. The floor is the medial aspect of the talus, uh, also made up of the sustentaculum tali and the medial wall, the calcaneus. And the contents include the neurovascular bundle as well as the three tendons of Tom, Dick, and Harry that I mentioned. Here's an example of the tarsal tunnel. You can see the nice posterior tibial nerve as it runs along the vessels. It's a hyperechoic structure, we like, to, we like to call a fascicular pattern versus the fibrillar pattern of a normal tendon. We like to evaluate this both in the short axis and the long axis. And what's important because of the fibrosis tunnel, if there's any space occupying masses, it may cause uh, pain and, and numbness down into the foot. Here's an example of a ganglion, which again is that benign lesion um, that can occur anywhere, but in this case in the tarsal tunnel, you can see on the sagittal T2 image, this multiloculated benign ganglion cyst adjacent to the posterior tibial tendon and nerve. Corresponding ultrasound image showing that cystic benign lesion um, adjacent to the nerve causing pinching and paresthesia um, in this patient. Sometimes we're asked to aspirate this and inject with steroids to cause pain relief um, in, this, in this benign lesion. So in summary, ultrasound is well suited for evaluating the soft tissue structures of the ankle. It is also useful for guiding injections and aspirations involving the ankle. Thank you very much.